Da haben wir Kauf des Conflict Shock, des Unexpected Conflict Shock, ADHS, which stands for Dirk Hammer Syndrome. He called it a DHS, obviously, in uh, honor of his son Dirk, whose tragic death was the cause why Dr. Hammer himself developed cancer. So let's see how this plays out in details. The moment we suffer such a conflict shock, the conflict shock impacts in a very specific, in fact, in a predetermined area in the brain. And we see on a brain scan the impact of this shock as a set of sharp concentric rings. The location, so in other words, where exactly in the brain the conflict um, hits or impacts is determined by the nature of the conflict. So if we learned already a little bit, a separation conflict always impacts in a very specific area in the so-called cerebrum, while a death right conflict always impacts in the area, in a specific area in the old brain, specifically in the brain stem. How does this play out on the organ level? Well, the moment the brain receives the shock, conflict shock, the shock is instantly communicated to the corresponding organ and instantly a significant biological special program is activated that assists, and I underline, that assists our organism in coping with the particular conflict situation. So in other words, Dr. Hammer identified the brain as the mediator between the psyche and the body. He identified the brain as the control station from which each and every biological program is controlled and coordinated. In German New Medicine, we view the psyche, the brain, and the organ as three levels of one unified organism. And we will keep in mind that it is the psyche that is the driving and the leading component of that program. Very important point. Such a conflict shock is, of course, a very subjective event. It's a very personal event. So how we perceive and experience this conflict shock is determined by our individual perception of this conflict situation, by our attitude, by our vulnerabilities, by our expectation, by our values and our beliefs. In other words, it is our subjective mode that determines what, how we perceive the conflict and consequently what symptoms will manifest themselves as a result of the shock. Let's look at an example, and I'm using this example so we really understand the difference between a psychological conflict and a biological conflict. Let's say, for example, a woman is all of a sudden unexpectedly faced with the situation that her husband wants a divorce. Well, this is no doubt a separation scenario, let's call it. It is a separation scenario, but this does not necessarily mean that the woman suffers a separation conflict in biological terms. She can also perceive that situation as a loss conflict, which will involve her ovaries. She can experience the situation as a starvation conflict, if she will no longer know how to provide for, provide for herself. She can suffer the conflict or experience it as an abandonment conflict, which will involve her kidneys or, let's say, as a self-devaluation conflict, which involves her bones. Well, whether the woman develops osteoporosis, ovarian cancer, liver cancer, or if she starts gaining weight when an abandonment conflict is involved, that is determined what she subconsciously associates with that particular situation. But as soon as this association is made, the conflict-related significant biological program is instantly activated. 
and the biological purpose of this biological program is to put her entire organism, so the, entire, the organism as a whole, into a state that facilitates a conflict resolution. And this, my friends, is the new medical paradigm. This is what Dr. Hammer found. If more tissue is required to facilitate a conflict resolution, the conflict-related organ will respond to the conflict with cell proliferation. So let's look, for example, at lung cancer. Well, the lungs, so Dr. Hammer discovered, identified, are linked uh, to a death fright conflict. Because in biological terms, the death panic is equated with not being able to breathe. So the moment that death fright occurs, the lung alveoli cells, which are in charge of processing oxygen, will immediately start to proliferate and to multiply, forming lung nodules or a lung cancer. And the biological purpose of the lung cancer is to allow the individual or put the individual into a better position to cope with the death fright by increasing the capacity of the lungs. While well, we can suffer such uh, death frights or death frights can be suffered during any life-threatening situation. But as you probably understand, one of the most common death frights is a diagnosis shock, particularly a cancer diagnosis shock. So this brain scan here shows the impact of such a death fright conflict in the area of the brain stem that controls the lungs. In other words, every person who has lung cancer shows on the brain scan the impact in this particular area of the brain. In other words, it is from this area of the brain from where the lung cancer program, as we want to call it, is coordinated and controlled. So it is the death panic, it is the cancer fright, it is the cancer death panic, as I'd like to call it, that is the real reason why lung cancer is the most common cancer. And it has nothing to do with smoking. We're going to talk about toxins a little bit later. Conventional medicine calls uh, such a lung cancer, this lung nodules, a malignant cancer or a malignant growth. But we have to realize that the term malignant used by conventional medicine is an artificial term that only indicates that the cell proliferation has exceeded an arbitrary limit. If the cell proliferation is below this limit, then the tumor is called benign. But if we learn to understand that a lung cancer is a meaningful biological process that has been successfully practiced for millions of years of evolution, then we also realize and learn to understand that the distinction between benign and malignant is actually pointless. So in German new medicine, we call the phase during which this meaningful cell proliferation takes place the conflict active phase. So other biologically meaningful cancers, just like lung cancer, are for example colon cancer, liver cancer, pancreas cancer, kidney cancer, uterus cancer, prostate cancer, and glandular breast cancer, to name a few, and we're going to talk of course later uh, in more details about the glandular breast cancer. And Dr. Hammer also found that this meaningful cell proliferation, in other words, these significant biological programs of these specific types of cancer, are all controlled exclusively from the so-called old brain.